Section 5.4, Composition of Ordinates and Harmonic Analysis. At the end of this section, we should be able to answer these questions. How do we sketch the graph of the sum of two sinusoids with unequal periods? How do we sketch the graph of the product of two sinusoids with unequal periods? What distinguishing characteristics will each of these graphs have? How do sinusoidal axes and symmetries help us determine the equation for the graph of a combination of sinusoids? What is the difference between composition of ordinates and harmonic analysis? Let's start by trying to determine what the sum of two sinusoids with unequal periods would look like. So here we have a graph with two different sinusoids. We have this large blue graph, which would be the equation y equals 3 sine of x, an amplitude of 3, and a period of 2 pi. We have the smaller red graph, which we can see is a cosine because it starts at a maximum, and it's been dilated by a factor of 1 sixth. We have six periods within the 2 pi, so we have y equals cosine 6x. What we want to do is create the graph of the sum of the two sinusoids. So we're going to take key points along each of these curves and add them together, points where we can evaluate easily. So we'll start with what's going on here on the y-axis. On the blue curve, I have a value of y equals 0. On the red curve, I have a value of y equals 1. So if I add these two together, I end up with a y-coordinate of 1 for my sum. So I'll put an x right there at 1. Now I'm going to move over to another place where I can easily see what at least one of the curves has as a y-value. So I'm going to focus here on the red curve, where right here the y curve has a value, or the red curve has a value of negative 1. So I'm going to go up to the blue curve and subtract 1, or drop down 1 unit off the blue curve, approximately. Then I go to the next place where it's easy to calculate a value on the red curve, which is right here where the graph crosses the x-axis, and I can put, uh, at that point, we have a value of y equals 0. So I'm adding 0 to whatever y value is on the blue curve. So I would be here, I would be here on the blue curve once again. And that would actually occur as well at the earlier value of 0 giving me another spot where I lie directly on the curve. And then I go to the next location on the red curve, which is at this maximum, where y equals 1 again. And I add 1 to the blue curve. So I end up above the curve here. Then I have another 0 that I'm adding. And then I'm subtracting 1. Then I have another 0, and then I'm adding 1, and another 0, subtracting 1, 0, adding 1, 0 again, subtracting 1, 0, adding 1, 0, subtracting 1, 0, adding 1, 0, subtracting 1, 0, adding 1. So now I've calculated all these points on a new curve that is the sum of my two original curves. I'm going to connect the dots now, and we'll see 
that we have something that bounces up and down around our original larger sinusoid. Yes, there we go. And down, and up, and down, and up, and down, and up. If we use technology, we can see it a little clearer. As our new sinusoid fluctuates around the new, or the larger of the two, initial curves. If we take away the original two curves, we can see a graph that looks like this. A graph that bounces up and down around a sinusoidal axis. So the way we would describe that is with a varying sinusoidal axis. Our graph, if we drew a line through the midpoints of all of these up and down cycles, we'd see that our sinusoidal axis now has a period of its own. A variable sinusoidal axis. Now let's look what happens if instead of adding the two sinusoids, we multiply them times each other. So here we're going to look at the product of sinusoids with unequal periods. We'll start with the same two functions that we used in the last example, y equals 3 sine x, the blue curve, and y equals the cosine of 6x, the red curve. And we're going to attempt to s determine what the graph of the product of these two functions will look like, 3 sine x, cosine 6x. So we're going to use the same strategy that we used when we added the two sinusoids together, using easy-to-calculate locations for y values on both curves. If we start on the y-axis, then we see that the initial value on the red curve is 1, and the initial value on the blue curve is 0. So we take 1 times 0, and we get 0. So on the y-axis, my product sinusoid will be at the origin. The next place where it's easy to calculate will be anywhere where that red curve or the blue curve is equal to zero because zero times any value will be zero. So I'm going to mark all of those locations where either curve crosses the x-axis. There's one and another and another, another, one more, another, the blue curve here back to the red curve, zeros. So all of these places will be where the new curve crosses the x-axis a lot of times. Now, the other places where it's easy to calculate are at the maximums and minimums of the red curve, where our value for y will be either 1 or negative 1, since we haven't dilated the cosine graph by any factor. So if I look at the first place where I'm at a minimum here, where y is equal to negative 1, that would mean that the y value on the blue curve is being multiplied by negative 1, which means that instead of being above the x-axis at approximately 1.7, I'm multiplying by negative 1, so I'd get a new value at negative 1.7 for the curve there. The next critical point on the red graph is here where y is equal to 1. So I'm multiplying 1 times whatever value I have on the blue curve, which means that I'm going to stay right there on the blue curve. And I'll have a point right there. The next critical point is a negative, so instead of being three units above the x-axis, I'm going to be three units below the x-axis. The next critical point will put me back on the curve, because it's one times the blue curve. And then it's 
1, negative 1 times the blue curve for the next critical point. So that's about right here. The next critical point is times 0, so there I am on the uh, x-axis again. The next is another negative 1 times the blue curve. So it flips and goes from negative 1.5 up to positive 1.5. Our next critical point is positive, so it's 1 times negative 2.5, so it's going to be negative 2.5 back on the curve again. And the next one we flip, so instead of being at negative 3, it's up at positive 3. The next one is multiplied by 1, so we're back on the curve. The next is multiplied by negative 1, so we flip the negative 1.5 up to positive 1.5. And the next one is times 0, 1 times 0. So we're back on the x-axis. Now, to connect these graphs, we need to create a sinusoid that goes up and down and up and down and back up, down and up and then down up and down, up, down, up, down, and back up. And we have this strange graph that if we use technology again, we can see bounces up and down and gets larger and then smaller and then larger again and then smaller. If we take away the original functions, we can see again that we have this repeating pattern, but our amplitude changes as we move across our function. So what we, the way we describe this is we say that our graph has a varying amplitude.